Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're actually going to review the Ravini Labs spot meter. We'll be right back. Welcome back and thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to review this little guy right here, the Ravini Lab Spot Meter. Just so you know, this is not a sponsored video. I bought and I paid for this with my own money through their Kickstarter. So this is my own review. They had no input into this whatsoever. So keep in mind, this is my first spot meter that I have ever used or even bought. Prior to this, I've only used the Sekonic L358 meter to do my metering with. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. I got the meter from the actual Kickstarter campaign and it did take a while to get here, but I was all right with that because I knew I was getting a new meter that came out on the market in current times that was gonna be supported and have updates to it, unlike the older ones that are on the market today. The downside to these is, not these, but the downside to the older ones is they're great, they're expensive, they work, but when they do go out, I'm going to venture a guess that they're going to cost more to repair than what you've actually paid for it. So uh, more or less, you've got an expensive paperweight or a shelf queen that'll look good sitting in the background back behind you when you're filming videos or for the people coming in hey that's cool let's get on with the review here i'm on my second one actually the first one showed up busted a hell and looked like it had been stepped on by somebody in the postal service during shipping but like i said with it being a one-man show matt jumped on the ball i let him know that it showed up busted he got it to me quickly to me that represents a good company and excellent customer service. So Matt, thank you. You know, it works great. The meter is small and compact and it definitely fits the need of not only film photographers, but I'm going to venture to say that it will work well with digital shooters as well. I haven't tried it yet. I'll probably be trying it this coming weekend. <laughs> but right now it's being marketed towards the film community and I see nothing wrong with that. I've seen a lot of videos already for this from a lot of large format and medium format film shooters. So they're out there. I'll, I'll leave a link or two if I remember down below. With it being small and compact, it does fit into a pocket of your jeans pretty well or a coat or even your front, you know, your front pocket on your hoodie. But if you don't even want to do that, hey, use the lanyard, put it around your neck. That way it's right there. You're not having to dig for it. And like I said, you know, right here on the top, it's got four it's got four little buttons that help you access the menus pretty easy. So I would recommend downloading the manual. Download it onto your phone. That way you can go through it anytime if you got a question on it. I'm not gonna do a full in-depth review on this. All others already have done it. You know, I'm just giving you my uses of it and how I like the ease of use. And you know, really so the next thing I'm going to say right here is this thing, you know, the ease of view for the back part, it's easy to see and you don't really have to squint that much when you turn it on. So once you turn it on and you start your focusing, whatever you do, do not close your eye. Don't close your other eye because what happens is it superimposes onto whatever eye that's not being used. That way you can see what you're focusing or your uh, your spot metering on, which will help you. And you're definitely going to need because, you know, if not, you may wind up messing it up. So, but once you get used to doing it, it's a pretty, pretty much a breeze. It took me about three minutes to get used to it. So not a big deal. Now it's got four metering modes on it. And, you know, you get single average zone and PMM, which is uh, Nick Carver's precision metering mode. If you want to know more about that you know head over to his youtube channel i'll leave a link down below and that's part of his metering course that you can purchase i don't know what the price is but you know it's actually built into here so if you want to play around with it figure out how to use it 
by all means do I may as well just to see how it works but for me when I tested this out I just stuck to uh, to single and left it at that that way it just plain simple easy to understand you can select film speeds aperture shutter priority exposure compensation and f-stops but the best thing to do is actually download the manual to learn the menus and the buttons like I said it isn't a full in-depth review of how this thing works these are just my thoughts on how to use it but I would definitely highly recommend using the manual and figuring out how to do the buttons so yes I'm looking down a lot you know <laughs> but I'll get rid of it for now I'll just put it down so right now I'm about to show you some of the images that I took with it by using this on my um, the Mamiya C33 please forgive all the dust and scratches dust is always a major issue here in my house because of it being so old it just happens and the scratches actually I think wound up being from me not winding it too tight on the uh, take up spool so without further ado oh yeah one more thing uh, use Pancro 400 for the film and metered at 400 most everything was at 1 500th of a second due to it being a nice cloudy day and you'll see that and if you notice there's some probably I guess artifacting and everything else in them it's due to my chemicals being exhausted so not the world's best photos but they're just here for you to see That's about it for the review on the Ravini, the Ravini Lab spot meter. Um, I'll leave a link down below to the Kickstarter so you can view all the updates and the actual link as well down below for you to go to the website to get the meter. I do recommend getting this meter if you want a good meter at a fair price and it does come with support. Like I said, you know, you get constant updates once you, you purchase it and you sign up, they'll send you saying, hey, an update is available. The downside is, is if you're an M1 Mac user right now, they are not available or the updates do not work on the M1 Mac. So you're either using an older M1 or an older Mac or a PC to get your updates, which it's not that big of a deal. So just make sure to remember that that's kind of a, a need to know thing. I hope this review has been good you know do me a favor make sure to subscribe like and hit that notification bell down below that way you can get notified of when I post new content and it'll help get this channel out to everybody else who can see it more and maybe they'll like it but for all y'all that have stuck around I thank you and for the continued support I like doing this and let's just try to keep this a positive channel and hopefully it'll go somewhere everybody have a great week and remember what you give out in the universe is going to come back to you it may not be today it may not be tomorrow but it will come back to you in some way or form in some time in the future just use your patience and never forget always be kind to others no matter how they may treat you never stoop to their level to pay them back for what they've done to you you know just remember treat them as you want to be treated and trust me You'll be better off in life, and I'll see y'all soon.